you know, there are many nominations that I am really happy about, like I am every year. And then there are many nominations that I wish there had been room for. Like that, what? What you know, would you have snubbed. wished that didn't get put in? So I'm very surprised and sad that Delroy Lindo's performance in Defy Bloods, which is not really a family uh, flick, but that is, you know, the Vietnam era drama by Spike Lee that came out on Netflix, you know, earlier last year. And Chadwick Boseman is also in that, uh, in fact. Uh, And it was, Delroy Lindo is always excellent. And if you look at his filmography, he is just one of those actors that knows exactly what he's doing. And, and, and I, you know, it, it's sort of like Giancarlo Esposito is another one like that, where you just, he knows, he knows when you're, when you know, when you see him in something, if you're going to get a wonderful performance. So I was sad for him because I just think he did an incredible job and got a lot of the other nominations. So that was a little bit surprising. And then in the documentary category, even though I really liked the documentaries, and in fact, we, we spoke about one of them the last time we chatted, but the documentary Boy State, which I do think is incredibly family friendly and is about the governor's uh, camps for very high achieving boys across the country. And in this case, it's in Texas. It really made us so in- invested in the boys. And, you know, they have to have their own elections for governor. And it just sort of shows. And so one is more conservative and one is more progressive. And just to see how the, the politics on the national scale were affecting these teenage boys and how they were going about their own sort of microcosm. And it is Texas. So some of the things that happened were a little bit to be expected. But I think as we watched, we just got so invested in that film and thought it was thought it was great. So that was a little bit like, oh no, it was a it was sort of a, a personal favorite. But I think mm-hmm. that happens every year. You know, speaking about representation and diversity, this is Disney Animation's first film about a Southeast Asian. So there's Mulan and she is Chinese. And this is the Southeast Asian cultures. I, it is not one specifically, but there are uh, sort of, you can see the influences from many of those different countries, right? So the, the, there's Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia and Thailand. There are a lot of, you can see a lot of elements from the various countries in that film. I also really appreciated that there was no romance. So there is, you you can see that film without thinking, okay, where's the prince or where's the knight or- like Frozen you know, or- Yes, there's, and even though I enjoyed those two and, you know, Frozen's really, I would say more about sisterhood than romance, but I just enjoyed that there was not, it wasn't about that. It was about friendship and teamwork and sort of coming into your own and, you know, sort of this idea of unity, which I think we could all use, right? This particular mm. year after last year. Uh, so I I thought it was great. The main character is voiced by Kelly Marie Tran. Kelly Marie Tran it will be known to Star Wars fans, and um, you know she was I forget her character's name. Rose. Rose. <laughs> it immediately came to me. Um, she's in that, and Sandra O oh is in it. Gemma Chan from the Crazy Rich Asians uh, movie is in that. Uh, her uh, Raya's father is played by Daniel J. Kim, who many will remember from Lost and Hawaii Five-0. Mm-hmm. So it is a uh, representation in the voice acting is real. No one is pretending to be Asian who's not, which is a real problem, you know, even in Disney. So I just thought they did a, a you know a great job with the movie and there are some really funny sidekick characters that I think younger kids will enjoy her the naked and- baby shows up yes just that <laughs> there's just this hilarious naked pickpocketing baby who has um little monkeys as as best friends uh she's she's in it and then she's adorable and then also Raya's kind of best friend is like a roly-poly, like a giant roly-poly. So uh, again, there are fantasy elements. Do not expect that you're going to see it and, th- and know exactly where they are. But the elements are there from these Southeast Asian cultures. And I do think it means a lot to you know the Asian community to be able to see that. And I think they obviously are having a very good year in terms of representation with Minari and Lee Isaac Chung and Steve Young and the 
uh, you know, the many nominations that they have and Chloe Zhao from Nomadland. So it is, it is a good year for Asian representation in award nominated films. 